when you look at it, you can see it getting smaller. Yeah. Look how dark it's getting. I know. It got like this in one minute. It's so close. Wow! Whoa! Whoa! Holy cow! Holy cow! Holy cow! That is amazing. Oh, wait! Glasses on. Through a prayer or through a song, I remember thee and what I long to be, and it warms my soul in the quiet. The phrase, children of the light, describes a people in whom the light of the gospel shines brightly. It describes a people who seek the light and are drawn to that which is virtuous, clean, and pure. There is an expectation that the children of the light are alert and watchful, not sleeping in a spiritual sense, when they should be awake. The eclipse of 2017 means more to me than God showing us his marvelous creations, that he lives and he is the God of heaven and earth. To me, it was a sign of his coming. This clip from NASA shows the comet's path starting from Salem, Oregon across the entire continental United States. I will share a few details that I know that make this eclipse a miraculous event, not only scientifically, but spiritually. As you see, the first city named by NASA, which the eclipse passes through, is Salem, Oregon. In Hebrew, Salem means peace, but it also has the additional meaning of complete in English. In the Bible, the number seven is a number of completeness. The earth was created in seven days. There are seven seals and seven plagues in the last days. So for completeness, let's look at what other cities the eclipse passes through. That would be Salem, Oregon, Salem, Idaho, Salem, Wyoming, Salem, Nebraska, Salem, Missouri, Salem, Kentucky, and Salem, South Carolina. A total solar eclipse is when the moon passes in between the earth and the sun and totally blocks out the sun. It is the first solar eclipse in nearly a hundred years to cross over the width of the United States, making it possible for millions to witness totality from within the arching pathway. The last time this happened was June 1918. That was the same year as the Spanish flu pandemic. There is to be another eclipse. The day is April 8, 2024. This has significance as a sign of the second coming of the Lord. The two paths cross, and what is significant about this is the location where they intersect. There is also importance around the dates 2017 and 2024, with many events such as Jubilee, or even the rec recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, but I won't talk about them today. I only want to mention that these signs are sometimes pieces of a bigger miracle. This image shows the point at which totality is at its greatest. If you are somewhere in that blue box, you're going to get a good view. <clears throat> the best location is near Carbondale. I went to Google Maps to take a better view of the area. Oh look, there is St. Louis, Missouri. It's pretty close to totality. Another area interests me more and it goes by the name Cahokia Mounds. 
These mounds are a remnant of an ancient civilization that lived in the Americas. The world knows them as the Mound Builders, but I know them as the Nephites. In the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ, we read about these people. The Cahokia Mounds in the area roundabout is considered to be the capital of the Mound Builders, or the Nephites. In the scriptures, there was a time where the Nephites were in such great distress and evil that they had to gather into one body for seven years to survive. They were under siege by a secret combination known as the Gadianton robbers. And it came to pass that in the latter end of the 18th year, those armies of robbers had prepared for battle and began to come down and to sally forth from the hills and out of the mountains in the wilderness and their strongholds and their secret places and began to take possession of the lands which had been deserted by the Nephites in the cities which had been left desolate. The Nephites had left their lands desolate and had gathered their flocks and their herds and all their substance and they were in one body. Therefore, there was no chance for the robbers to plunder and to obtain food save it were to come up in open battle against the Nephites, and the Nephites being in one body and having so great a number, and having reserved for themselves provisions, and horses and cattle and flocks of every kind, that they might subsist for the space of seven years, in the which time they did hope to destroy the robbers from off the face of the land. I don't think it is a coincidence that the area of totality is at the heartland of the Nephite people, who were commanded to prepare for seven years that they might defeat the secret combination. Our two eclipses are seven years apart, and I'm of the opinion that this is a time to prepare. I find this gathering significant compared to the gathering of saints. When you look at the night sky and see the stars that number the sands of the beach, know that these stars are outnumbered by the planets that orbit them. And in the known universe, we have discovered that there are little to no planets that have one moon. They either have many moons or no moon at all. And that these moons, there's not one of them that is situated in such a way for a total eclipse to happen, that the moon needs to be the same size as the sun when it passes between them. And there are no moons that we know of that exist in this way. And now Korahor said unto Alma, If thou wilt show me a sign that I may be convinced that there is a God, yea, show unto me that he hath power, and then will I be convinced of the truth of thy words. But Alma said unto him, Will ye say, Show unto me a sign, when ye have the testimony of all these thy brethren, and also all the holy prophets? The scriptures are laid before thee, yea, and all things denote there is a God, yea, even the earth, and all things that are upon the face of it, yea, and its motion, yea, and also all the planets which move in their regular form do witness that there is a Supreme Creator. Call upon the Lord that His kingdom may go forth upon the earth, that the inhabitants thereof may receive it, and be prepared for the days to come, in the which the Son of Man shall come down in heaven, clothed in the brightness of His glory, to meet the kingdom of God which is set up on the earth. What can we do to prepare now for that day? We can prepare ourselves as a people. We can gather the Lord's covenant people, and we can help redeem the promise of salvation made to the fathers, our ancestors. All of this must occur in some substantial measure before the Lord comes again. First and crucial for the Lord's return is the presence on the earth of a people prepared to receive Him at His coming. He has stated that those who remain upon the earth in that day from the least to the greatest, shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, and shall see eye to eye, 
and she'll lift up their voice and with the voice together sing this new song, saying, The Lord hath brought again Zion. The Lord hath gathered all things in one. The Lord hath brought down Zion from above. The Lord hath brought up Zion from beneath. <laughs> 